get out, your boyfriend just wanted music gone. If I could somehow do anything that would undo what I did to us, just tell me what it is. I think everything has changed. Nice beard, you loser. <laughs> if I can pay you a compliment, you're one of the most convincing buskers <laughs> I've ever said in my life. Thanks very much. But yeah, you know. well, it's because most buskers, most, not all, aren't that good. And uh, I am definitely in that camp, and uh, that's why I wasn't great. Yeah. There's a real freewheeling charm about this movie. When people see it, you know, you just get swept away by it. Working on it, was it very much a kind of fly by the seat of your pants thing as well? Very much so, and I mean, and I love that. Like, it, it's all John. It all comes down to John. He, he is absolutely, you know, the, the beating heart of the film, and, and uh, he... If you're in his films, he he sort of fills you with this confidence where he makes you feel like you're absolutely so integral to it and he and he encourages you to explore it and use your own mind and, and mine it and, and uh, he gives you confidence to fail basically is what he does. He goes, just go for it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work. We'll do it again. Because when I saw that you were going to be doing this film with him and you're a man that knows a bit about writing good love stories and relationship oh, stuff. Thanks, man. You know, I thought, there's two people that are kindred spirits. I mean, we would just have so many great chats, and I don't even know if he realises it himself, but he's, he's really full of wisdom. And uh, I remember him saying one thing to me, which was, uh, you, you got to, he said to me, you've got to be careful that, that, uh, that you don't need too much money, because that's when you'll have to stop making the creative choices that you'll want to make. He said, just make sure you never need that much money and you will always creatively be fulfilled. And another thing he said to me was, at the end of the day, it all just comes back to family. And like, he's just, he says these things without even realizing, I think that I or you or whoever he's talking to will, will take these things and hold on to them as pieces of wisdom forever. And um, and that's what he does, you know? it's. Um, He's great. You're doing all the scenes out in the streets and that. Did the public kind of stand back or were they right there? Because it looks like you just arrived, set up the stuff and went for it. Well, that's the beauty of shooting in Manhattan, basically, is everybody feels like they're all in a film anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And they're all so just on their mission that if anything, like, oh, it's a film crew. Like, do you know what I mean? It's very, very different to, like, if you film in High Wycombe, or do you know what I mean, where people would really like, oh, you know, it, it never felt like that. I mean, Kira would get followed quite a lot by photographers and things, but but mostly for, for us and the film crew, John would always use quite a small unit when we'd be out on the streets to not draw too much attention to us. But, you know, for much of the film, the people that are walking across the back of the shots, they're, they're all just people walking around New York. And, and it really feels like, Manhattan is the sort of third character in the movie, really, you know? Definitely, it's like a, a love letter to a yeah. city or, or that in the same way that once was a love letter to Dublin. Absolutely, you yeah. Know? In terms of the, the character's journey in this, or Kira's character's journey, and she's trying to find her way in the world and that, did it ever get you thinking about what might have been if things hadn't have panned out for you the way they did? Yeah, I think it all the time because... You, you know, so so little of it is down to talent and ability. It's it's timing and luck and all of those things which are completely out of your control. And uh, mostly now, I just think about when it's all going to end and stop and hope that I'll be all right. You know, because you know, if history shows us anything, it's like these are sort of transient things and they'll go as quick as they arrived. But I think the important thing is to just try and enjoy it as much as you can the whole way and and not become a dick. And if you can not become a dick, you'll be all right, I think, because you'll, you'll be able to go and do other things, you know? You should start giving out this advice as well, you know? I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm ready for... I don't, I'm not at, uh, you know, Yoda status. That's where I place John Carney. Have you one song yourself that gets you through good times, bad times, any times? Days Like This, Van Morrison. Well, whatever you're doing, you put that song on, you're 100% brighten up your day. It will make your day better. Yeah. I've got one in my heart now. There you go.